Folks, thanks for coming on the line with us today. My name is John Dubas with Premier Senior Marketing, and we'll be spending the next 45 minutes to an hour identifying opportunities in the Medicare market. A bit of housekeeping, um, we are taking questions, but if you would put them in the chat box and we'll make certain that they're all answered at the end of the presentation. And you'll also notice that there is a handout that is inserted into the presentation that is available for you to download as well. Um, it's the Understanding Medicare Part C and D enrollment periods, and we'll talk about that during the presentation uh, as well. So what we're gonna go through today is speak to the different components of the Medicare product opportunity, including uh, a bit of information on Medicare Advantage special enrollment periods, an overview on special needs plans, and detail some information for you on Medicare supplements and some of the changes that are coming about in that area as well. There is additional information on legislation that's going to affect some of the enrollment periods across the board, and we'll address that in the presentation uh, this morning. We will also briefly touch on some ancillary product programs that are appropriate and fit hand in glove basically with the Medicare market, including some programs that deal with hospital indemnity programs, critical illness cancer plans, uh, demand products such as dental programs, briefly touch on final expense, and speak to the marketing programs that we offer here at Premier that help get you in front of the audience that you're seeking. So when we look into the Medicare market, one of the first things, obviously, that is a big factor on why agents look to engage within this niche market is the fact that it is so large. Every time a carrier comes in front of you or a marketing organization such as ours, we always refer to the, the aging of the baby boomer market, or over 10,000 people a day are aging in. And that's in addition to the huge market that's already in place. It's about one in every eight Americans is part of the over 65 market. When you consider too that about a seventh of the Medicare population are under the age of 65 and are disabled um, to get that coverage, you can see the size of the market that comes into play. When we're looking at some of the information from, well, even at 20, in 2015, you had nearly 56 million people on Medicare that are viable prospects for folks that engage in this market. And we look at, as the baby boomers age, it's gonna become an even larger market where by 2030, you're gonna have over 72 million people, nearly twice the number of the folks that were of the age at the millennials time period at 2000. So it's a big chunk of our population. What I would ask of you to consider is the fact that there are basically two categories within the Medicare market. There's the traditional Medicare program that are it's made up of folks that have part A and part B and look to cover other needs outside of Medicare because it was never considered to be an all-inclusive coverage for those folks who want to pick up additional coverage to augment what traditional Medicare offers. And then there are the folks that are interested in the Medicare Advantage and PDP programs, which are basically an outsourcing of the administration of their benefits to a private carrier. There are some key differences within this market, obviously. Um, their legislation and marketing and conduct oversight varies from program to program. There are things that you can do with traditional Medicare and marketing that you cannot do with Medicare Advantage and PDP programs, biggest one of which is cold calling. You cannot cold call for Medicare Advantage products where you can for the vast majority of the Medicare supplement programs. There are certain things that come into play as well when it comes to product and enrollment periods. What we're referring to here is the opportunity to market within the guidelines that are given to us by the government. And folks that are on Medicare supplement programs are not locked in to their Medicare supplement plan. They can change year round. And in certain states, birthday states, you have an opportunity to do so without additional underwriting. 
Obviously, in the vast majority of the states, if someone was to change from one Medicare supplement program to another outside of a guarantee issue period, there is underwriting that is involved. The Medicare Advantage plans for their part, well, the, the majority of folks are locked into their coverage uh, after the open enrollment period, and then there are special election periods that we'll go through and address that enable a great number of these people to change their coverage throughout the year. And then, of course, the licensing and certification process between these programs is different. There's only one Medicare supplement program that requires certification before you sell that product. There are certain Medicare supplement programs that are just in time contracting, where the first piece of business goes in with the contracting. When you look at Medicare Advantage or prescription drug plans, they're all a circumstance where the, the contract has to be in place, in place and you have to go through and certify and make certain that you have your duckies in a row before you begin marketing those programs. When you look at the spread of the individuals that have different coverages within the Medicare market, you'll see that the majority of people still fall within traditional fee-for-service Medicare. Um, there's a never-increasing number of people that are taking advantage of the Medicare Advantage programs. And then, of course, some of them will access their drug benefit through an integrated prescription benefit within the Medicare Advantage programs. Others will take a standalone Part D coverage as part of their uh, coverage in addition to a traditional Medicare supplement program. Some of them even have that coverage on a side basis if they are in certain retiree plans. And then you have a subset of the population that are dual eligible. And these are folks that have both Medicare and Medicaid to one degree or another. And these folks are a distinct category that we're going to address in greater detail in just a moment. As I mentioned, you'll see that there has been a significant increase in the number of people that are enrolling in Medicare Advantage programs. And there's a good reason for it, obviously. Um, many of these plans are available without additional premium. And when you look at the median income for a Medicare beneficiary being right around $24,000 per year, many of them cannot afford the supplemental premiums for traditional Medicare supplements. So it's a very viable option for them. You'll notice a dip shortly after the millennial or the change of into the 2000s brought about by the Billery administration. And at that point in time, you saw many of the Medicare Advantage programs contract their service area. The benefits degraded. Then when George Bush got in the office and the funding was restored to the programs, you saw where once again, the enrollment in these plans tracked up incrementally. Some of the things that we're seeing right now as well coming into 2019 are changes in legislation that affect the availability of certain plans to certain individuals in certain areas. And one of those changes that it's coming about that is infecting a lot of people across the country is the sunsetting of Medicare cost plans. And these are programs that were affected by legislation um, that requires basically the sunsetting of those plans if there are two other Medicare Advantage programs available in those markets. Um, it's a piece of legislation that was enacted that was actually going to be in play by the beginning of 2018, but it was delayed a year. And what we're seeing is a large effect in certain states. If you reside in the state of Minnesota, there's nearly 400,000 people on these plans, and they will have either a transition from that Medicare cost plan to a Medicare Advantage plan with their current carrier, if the current carrier is going to offer it, but they'll also have an opportunity to examine other options and look at those as a viable way of covering the shortfall of the traditional Medicare uh, program through fee-for-service. Of those 400,000 people in Minnesota, nearly 400,000 that are affected, 
and nearly 180 of those, 180,000 of those are in the Twin Cities region. Other states that are affected by this legislation include Wisconsin, Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, Colorado, Texas, and Virginia. So it's something that is creating quite a bit of buzz already. If you are an agent in one of those states, we've probably called you along with a number of other organizations to make certain that you have within your portfolio options to take care of these people. Some of it may be a transition to an, a Medicare Advantage plan. Some of these folks may look at a traditional Medicare supplement program with a PDP program as a, the best way of covering their needs moving forward. As I mentioned, for some of these people, it may be a simple transition within the same company's coverage options that they have now. So in certain states, you may see uh, an individual basically um, move from one plan to another within the company. They'll look at some other options as well, but the way some of the cost plan, well, the way the cost plans are set up, they may significantly consider Medicare supplement programs simply because Medicare cost plans allow them to go outside of the network, work with traditional Medicare outside the network, and they obviously won't have that option in many of the Medicare Advantage plans, which will be generally set up on an HMO chassis, some of them on a PPO program. An additional piece of legislation that's affecting what we do as agents is the um, MACRA legislation and the effect that it is having on traditional Medicare supplement programs. And this is a piece of legislation that's gonna affect certain folks that are newly eligible and how they can access a program that covers the Part B deductible. These plans are not going away, but the availability will be limited to certain groups. And that's something that we need to be aware of uh, moving forward, because this is something that will come into play at the beginning of the year as well. Additional macro impact, well, this is what's bringing about the changing of the Medicare card that had been using social security numbers. They're coming up with a Medicare beneficiary identifier. There's a ton of information out there on it. If you'd like that, make certain that you raise your hand for us so we can get you that additional information. It also, this legislation is changing how some healthcare providers are being compensated and that's going to a program that's based on quality of care as opposed to the number of services that the, the provider performs. Another piece of legislation that's going to be changing some of how we access different programs is the 21st Century Cures Act, which will basically take us back in time when it comes to how Medicare Advantage programs operate at the first of the year. Currently, and this year being the last year of it, um, from the January 1st to Valentine's Day on February 14th, we had what we referred to as an MADP program, where a beneficiary in a Medicare Advantage program could take and go back to traditional Medicare and pick up a Medicare supplement program. What this legislation does is take us back prior to um, the macro legislation that changed that from a switch period. In the past, the first three months of the year, allowed an individual to change from one Medicare Advantage program to another, even a bit of latitude uh, based on additional information they may have received, changes in the provider network, whatever the reason for the desire for the change, well, they could do it in the past. Beginning in 2019, they'll be able to do that again. Change from one MA program to another, one PDP program to another. It will not allow the individual to pick up M a programs if they didn't already have them in place. So it's a, a, a longer switch period going back to the older days of what we had the opportunity to do. Now, one of the things that we need to really look at is the availability of a special election period. And for many folks, you'll say, well, boy, that's just, just affects 
Medicare Advantage programs? Not really, because when you look at these programs, they are locked in to certain coverages. They may be locked out of certain coverages as well, but using a SEP code may allow you to take an individual not only from one MA plan to another, but an MA plan to a Medicare supplement and vice versa. These are based on an individual's particular situation. It isn't necessarily a universal special election period. It's our job to help determine whether or not a person actually qualifies for such an opportunity. And you have a lot of help and reference material in helping a person determine if they could actually change their coverage during the lock-in period. You know, we have the annual election period, the open enrollment from October 15th to December 7th, and then of course have had the MADP period, um, but these are periods that because of a person's eligibility, they can change throughout the year. Some of the more common events that allow for a special election period include moving from a planned service area permanently out of that service area, losing other creditable coverage for prescription drugs, perhaps misinformation on the coverage that a person has, um, entering, living, or living at a long-term care facility. There are also enrollment periods based on a person's financial situation. The extra help program, the low-income subsidy, is a continuous special election period currently, as are folks that belong to a uh, state pharmaceutical program. You do have the five-star rating special election period as well. Uh, other certain circumstances come into play. It's important to note we can use that five-star SEP only one time each year. The different companies do give you different information or their version of the information on the enrollment periods. This is some material that's available from Aetna, United Healthcare's version, Humana's version, and then of course this piece which is put out by the government, by CMS, that goes through the different enrollment periods. This is the piece that is attached to today's presentation as a handout. It is also a piece that is going out as part of the follow-up to today's presentation, which is being recorded. But this goes through and gives you an idea in a somewhat generic basis as to when a person can sign up for different coverages, and then details the different enrollment periods and penalties that are involved across the board. It gives you a little bit of information um, based on the government's layout of those special election periods. One of the reasons why we show you these preceding pieces is if you do business with a particular carrier, they want you to label that special election period as they label it. So it's the old, it's their ball game, play by their rules. So if you're working with Aetna or United or Anthem or Humana or whomever, make certain that if you're doing a paper application, you are listing the SEP code as the company lays out that SEP code. So now let's give you a little bit of information about those special needs programs. These are the type of MA program that was created by the Medicare Modernization Act of 2003, and it is a program that is broken into three different categories. They are intended to address specific needs of a portion of the Medicare population in the three types. Well, there's a special needs program for people with certain severe or disabling chronic conditions. They call it a chronic SNP, a C-SNP. There is a special needs plan for folks who live in an institution. That's an institutional SNP, an I-SNP. And then of course, the most prevalent of the special needs plans, and that's for the dual beneficiary population, a D-SNP. This is for folks that have both Medicare and Medicaid. When you look at some of the particulars of the special needs plans, you'll notice in the chronic conditions that there are a number of programs available based on certain health conditions that a person may be eligible for. That doesn't mean that that 
type of chronic special needs plan is available in every area and for every one of these diseases. Uh, when the special needs plans first rolled out, we saw a preponderance of programs that were available in many, many areas. And as time has gone by, we have seen a number of them shrink in availability. So even though there, there is a listing of a number of physical conditions here, doesn't necessarily mean that one of these SNP plans will be available in your market. A lot of folks will look at the institutional SNP and say, well, that seems like a good deal for me. I can market that. I have contacts on a lot of nursing homes. Keep in mind, the network component of this is a particular institution. So it is not as widely available as you may assume by looking at uh, the labeling of that special needs plan. The program that does have the greatest play right now is the dual special needs program. And this is to address the portion of the population that not only qualifies for both Medicare and Medicaid, but those folks are generally the, the portion of the population that access care most frequently as well. And you'll see in this particular slide how uh, detailed the different conditions are for the chronic special needs plans. The majority of the programs that are available do address do address cardiovascular difficulties or folks with diabetes. And you'll note between those two types of conditions, you're looking at 87% of the population. Um, widespread availability of cardiopulmonary programs, well, you know, just don't see them as often as you used to. Um, rarely do you see the mental health ones, obviously, at this particular point in time where there's just 1% and other conditions as well. The big nemesis of Medicare Advantage programs the end-stage renal question, the only health question that's asked on the application. There are certain programs that are available specifically for those individuals. The challenge is what we see as independent insurance agents is those are generally not available to the independent broker population um, as a commissionable product to be marketed uh, across the spectrum. For the dual special needs plan, since I keep beating that, saying that, oh, that's the big one to have, well, it is. It's also one that is dominated by a limited amount of carriers. You'll see some of the names change since this particular document, but United Healthcare, much as they are in the regular Medicare Advantage arena, is the big gorilla in this area as well, but you see some um, very strong plans offered by Humana, Cigna, WellCare, uh, Centene All Well, um, a number of other programs that come into play. And a lot of that is brought about because of the push for managed care within the Medicaid arena as well. So a lot of the folks that are marketing Medicare Advantage dual special needs programs are also highly active in managing the Medicaid population. And before that excites you too much, well, that's all handled by third-party administrators when it comes to enrollment. We don't work the Medicaid market in that fashion as independent insurance agents. You'll note here, once again, as a reinforcement of my beating it to death, the vast majority of people that are in a special needs plan are in a special needs plan that is a dual SNP. Why would you want to work that market? They don't have any money to buy anything. Well, the particular programs in the DSNP market are compensatable, and as are the other Medicare Advantage programs, and the compensation is the same generally across the board for a DSNP versus a traditional Medicare Advantage program. It's covered at 100%, so technically, they don't have to buy anything. What they're doing is enrolling in a program that may offer them additional benefits. And we speak to it because it's a big part of the Medicare market. I mentioned earlier the median income for a Medicare beneficiary is right around $24,000, $25,000 a year. You look at some of the assistance programs that come available, that means about half the population can get into a Medicare Advantage program during lock-in because of uh, their income and assets or lack thereof. 
Um, one of the things we we look at with that is a separation between a true dual beneficiary and a folk that is a partial beneficiary, but we'll talk about that in just a second. As I mentioned, a big chunk of the folks that are in the Medicare arena are eligible. Uh, you've got about 20% of the Medicare population that are true duals, and you have about 37% of the population that has incomes below $20,000. What this does for us is gives us an opportunity not only to address the true duals, but the partial duals um, that also have a continuous special election period at present, and it gives us the opportunity to help them with a regular Medicare Advantage program. In addition to everything that we spoke about with the amount of monies that these people have or don't have available to them, these folks are also the people that tend to use medical services very frequently. They spend about a third of their income on medical programs. And when you look at dual SNPs or um, partial qualifiers, you can really help these people by the use of a Medicare Advantage program. They generally aren't a viable prospect for Medicare supplement plans, but it is still a market we can work as an agent and do well a couple of different ways. A lot of folks will have, a have some difficulty in discerning the differences between Medicare and Medicaid. To make it as simple as possible, Medicare programs are based on age or disability. Medicaid programs are based on income and assets. Big difference. Uh, neither of them are really tied to age, even though most of us consider Medicare a program for the senior population. As I mentioned before, 26th and a 7th of the folks that are on Medicare are there because of disability and they're under the age of 65. And we all know that as we work that population, that with some regularity, the only Medicare supplement programs that they are eligible is a plan A at a very high premium. The benefits don't vary on a Medicare Advantage program because of someone's aged age, if they qualify and they're in, it doesn't matter if they're two or they're 102, they're gonna get the same benefit program. So Medicaid is actually a federal program administered by the different states. It's based on income and assets. They don't pay money to the recipient with traditional Medicaid. If you're thinking that, well, gee, some people get paid by the state, that's an SSI program. That's an entirely different presentation. Be happy to supply you details. This, however, is uh, a different situation. You also have different income and assets that are available for folks that are community-based versus those folks that are in a nursing home or for disabled children living at home. So different levels that come into play. We do have an additional training on low income subsidy and Medicare savings programs uh, that goes through the detailing of those differences. And that is coming up very shortly as well. So if you're interested in additional detail on that, please look for the invitation to that webinar. To complicate life within the DSNIP population, for us as agents, there are dual demonstration programs that are coming into place in certain states that will affect the commissionable status of the programs that we offer. These are programs that the government, in coordination with the federal government and the states, are working together to help better deliver care for folks that are on both Medicare and Medicaid. They are not available in every state in the union. They are a growing piece of the coverages available to people in those states that qualify, but it is a piece that generally takes them out of our marketing strategy. And by that, I mean, if someone's in a dual demonstration product, it's generally a non-compensatable program for us as an agent, that's why we spend the time we do in this presentation to help you discern the differences. The current states that are in an MMP, MMP program include California, Illinois, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, New York, Ohio, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Texas, and Washington. 
There are links here that will help you get additional information if you are in one of those states or market in one of those states. The program in Texas is referred to as STAR Plus, and this is basically a privatization of the Medicaid program and a situation where the state contracts with a private insurance company to administer the benefits of those that are on Medicaid. It started out in the more urban areas across the state and is now available in every county in the state of Texas, all 256 of them. The demonstration project that we talked about that do, does a, affect your commissions is only in the major metropolitan areas and only in six counties at present. So it's something that you need to be aware of. So if you market for Amerigroup and Anthem product or Cigna HealthSpring, Molina Superior, um, United Healthcare, depending upon the market, it does have a bearing upon how you market in those counties as part of your marketing program because it'll affect your commission. I mentioned earlier that there are partial duels that are also eligible for our help year round. And these are the people that are sometimes referred to as the near poor. They don't qualify for a Medicare savings program that helps them with the medical premium of their Part B coverage or Part A coverage, but it does generally affect the premiums they pay or the amounts they pay as a co-payment for prescription drugs. So this is a very viable option for us. You have different programs available online that can help you help these people determine whether or not they qualify for these coverages. As I mentioned, our LIS MSP presentation goes into greater detail in as to the different levels of assistance that a person may qualify for. This particular slide will give you access to links to give you further information on the low income subsidy program, sometimes referred to as extra help. MSP programs, these are programs that are a joint program from the federal government and the state they're funded by the feds, but they're administered by each state, and the, the qualifications can vary from state to state. What these programs do is also give you a continuous special election period, which allows you to market consistently throughout the year. They provide regular plan commissions. They also are a bit of the population that is generally really grateful for our help. It makes you feel good, and they are much more open to referring you to their family and friends that may be in a similar situation. A little bit of a review. The old 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every day for the next 20 years, a big portion of why we market year round. You have 90% of the seniors that have at least one chronic disease, 77 have two or more. So you have the chronic SNP, SEP, and then you have the dual beneficiaries that add on because they are 20% of the population. So generally, agents that work consistently in the Medicare Advantage world do as much business outside of open enrollment as they do during the open enrollment period. How you can determine where things are in your particular market is through the use of Medicare.gov. Pop in there, give it some details as to where you're marketing. It'll tell you the number of programs that are available in your mar market for Medicare Advantage programs. And then it'll also lay out to you the information on the special needs program. You'll note in this circumstance, I look for identification for the, the dual beneficiaries, the folks that have Medicare and Medicaid, and then the folks for the CSNP folks that are in the long-term care facilities, it's a non-commissionable product, kind of a moot point for us as agents. It will then lay out the names of the program and you'll be able to determine if it is a special needs plan, who it tells you it is. If it says SN SMP, it's a special needs program available in your market. The difference between some of these carriers, obviously you have the reputation of the carrier, but you also have to look at the extra benefits. The reason why a person who is a dual beneficiary, why would they get on the program? Well, they can get some extras. 
And then, of course, consider the network that is involved, not only the primary care doctors and the specialists, but the hospitals and of particular interest to dual beneficiaries or chronic beneficiaries, durable medical equipment, and home health care. Those are also contracted providers. It's important for us to note who goes where and how to address that in order to aid in our persistency. Because if they can enroll every month, they can disenroll every month, we need to cover all the bases very carefully, like you do in every MA plan, but paying particular inter uh, attention to this in your presentation. Some carriers are also very, very active in supporting your marketing efforts across the board when it comes to traditional MA programs and the special needs plans. And that may be a big factor as to who you contract with and with whom you market. When we look at the different Medicare supplement programs, obviously they've been standardized across the board. The deductibles do change year over year generally, or they can stay the same. This gives you a layout of the standardized uh, med sup programs across the plan spectrum. What we're seeing in the cost plan areas are folks that are generally looking at the F and G programs, either a standard F plan or high deductible plan F. Um, the great push that many of the carriers are doing for plan G, where that $183 part B deductible can be an expensive coverage as compared to F and G um, based on premiums. And then you're seeing some folks look very strongly at the plan N because they do mirror um, the Medicare Advantage programs, but are much less expensive uh, than an F or a G. We do provide a tool for you as an agent with our Medicare Supplement Quote Engine that allows you access to the different carrier types and programs, but it also gives you additional information on ancillary benefits so you can help them with information on dental programs, hospital indemnity plans, and critical illness programs. That access is available without cost to agents that are contracted with us. We wanna make certain that um, we have you set up on that program so you not only can determine what you need in your portfolio, but also offer the service to your prospects and clients of a regular review. Program's really easy to use. You just ask for the age where the person lives by zip code, whether they're a boy or a girl, whether or not they use tobacco, if there's only gonna be one person in the household, uh, that can affect their rate on a household discount. Some of the companies actually apply that discount without both people being on the plan. And then you're gonna look at an effective date and it's gonna give you a rate. As I mentioned before, in addition to the quote engines across the board for different types of care, we also give you information on how to approach these people electronically and do enrollments in a fashion that can be much uh, more time effective, but also much more accurate because, hey, we all write sloppy upon occasion. One of the programs we offer in the electronic enrollment arena is Medicare Center, which will allow you to collect a scope of appointment electronically and remotely and file it, keep it on file for the 10 years that's required of us. We touch on briefly the ancillary products that help fill out the needs for our prospects and clients. We look across the board and see that many of these programs will cover gaps in whatever coverage we offer on a general basis. A lot of the Medicare Advantage programs, some of the challenges that you have deal with hospital stays or treatment for cancer. Two things that drive up an out-of-pocket expenditure very quickly. We have ancillary programs that are available at a very reasonable pro, uh, premium to address those needs. There's also an incredibly innovative pre-planning service that we offer through Legacy Safeguard that basically walks you through the pre-planning process and through a final expense sale. If this is an arena that is of interest to you, we will set you up with our company's experts in final expense to make certain that you have this tool available. Some of the things we do to help you find folks, well, we will create a contact list 
custom ordered for you, available to you without cost with contracts with our organization. And then we offer support on different community-based programs. Believe it or not, Walmart rolled out a month earlier this year. We're already speaking to Walmart. We had a presentation on that last week. If that's of interest to you, be happy to get you the link to that recording of that webinar that will give you details on how you can qualify for help in engaging through Walmart or other retail opportunities. We do a number of things through faith-based organizations because they offer a very trusted environment for a presentation. These are generally group presentations or camps, and it's a great way for you to access folks in the Medicare community on a daytime basis, on a regular basis, with a variety of different presentations available to you, so you can be in those locations regularly, consistently, with a variety of topics. We also work with a number of providers across the board that can help you get in front of the Medicare population as well. These include doctors and specialists, but also pharmacists, dentists, other medical professionals that deliver on the care that is provided through the programs that we offer. There are certain circumstances where carriers will also help you with prospects. Uh, there are internet lead services that we have used that can be of use to you as well. And then we also offer a unique direct mail support program that is production-based. In the contact list, one of the things that we ask of you is to consider different approaches into the market. As I mentioned earlier, you can cold call for Medicare supplement plans, but not for Medicare Advantage plans. And since everyone speaks to you about the aging in of the boomer population and the 10,000 people a day, a whole bunch of people chase that. So one of the things that we would recommend that you do is consider people outside of the T65 population. Don't want to ignore it, obviously, but look at the people that are 66 or 67, because these are folks that may have experienced the premium increase on their current Medicare supplement program. Um, they are less pursued than a T65 individual, and these folks have been on the program, so you even though are thorough in your presentation, it may not take as much time to explain the plans that are available to them. We also ask that you look at folks that are 6970, because if they are a Medicare supplement individual, they tend to be a higher income individual. That means they may have worked at a location that provided a managed retirement program that at the age of 70 and a half, requires a minimum distribution, which will free up funds for other programs for you. They include life insurance, annuities, or other products that that person needs to cover uh, their particular circumstances. That mail program I referenced, well, if you write 10 apps in a month, uh, the 1,000-piece mailer only costs you 230. If you write five apps in a month, 305. So some steep discounts in mail programs through a number of different organizations that are set up with pre-approved letters. We also offer an exclusive program to put you on the internet. The social media put on pilot through Coverage Made Easy. This is a program that helps you establish your presence online and is something we'd be happy to get you some additional details on as well. One of the things that many agents overlook is their current book of business. If they're cross-selling across different lines, that allows them to go back for different product versus what they had originally presented, but it also gives you the opportunity to call folks because they are your client. Regular contact with those individuals gives you the opportunity to do so and stay in compliance with do not call us. So that's something to be remembered in the fact that you want to do it on a regular basis so you have the legal right to touch your own book of business. That cross-selling element does not only drive up your income through different revenue streams with different products, but it also drives up the persistency across the board of the products that you have in those households. We do offer a multitude of educational opportunities with specific types of marketing programs 
if you are working a retail situation, we want to make certain that you do so in the most effective basis. So we have different programs that help you engage the community around the location that you've selected, which may include marketing to faith-based organizations or providers or other opportunities in your target market. We want to make certain that programs such as today are reinforced with you so you remember that there are special election periods and that there are reference material available to you to make certain that you engage with every opportunity that is possible for you. And that includes knowing about the support programs that give you an opportunity to market to the Medicare population year round. What we ask of you is determine to determine what is your own personal marketing program, what you need to fulfill that program, and that you act on it. You contract appropriately, make certain that you have all your background details in play, commit to marketing actively, and we follow through together. What we want to do is make certain that we're the resource for that business for you and that we help you with the products and the support in the background to take care of you as an agent. Our primary contact number is 1-800-365-8208. The people that are listed on this particular slide are individuals that work in our Dallas office. If you're currently working with a premier marketer, obviously continue that and we'll do anything we can support, do anything that we can do to support that relationship. Um, but we want to make certain that you have access to all the support that is available to you. And once again, you can reach any of us through the 800-365-8208 toll-free number. That said, the old expression, when all is said and done, more is said than done. Take advantage of the opportunities you have available through Premier Marketing. Reach out to us. Watch for the follow-up for today's presentation. We'll make certain that the the promises made through this are fulfilled and that you have access to the resources we make available to you. I want to thank you for coming on the line with us today. I don't see any questions in the chat box. Um, we'll be doing some follow-up with folks that have expressed interest on this topic and make certain that you have what you need. That said, I wish you good selling and look forward to speaking with you down the line. Thanks.